Hello, my name is Matthew Hallberg. I'm the product manager at Serial Tech, and this is video four of four of the series on training on the SAS SATA bus expert. Today we'll be covering working with the trace. Topics include setting bookmarks, exporting various views, searching, hiding, and other techniques. The first thing we're going to look at is X's, O's, and bookmarks. Using set X and set O when you right click gives you timing between specified events. As a pro tip, when you're on an event that you want to put a marker on, you can type X or type O to set markers. Bookmarks let you mark important areas of the trace and get back to them easily. Pro tip is uh, when you're on an event that you want to bookmark, hold control and hit B to set a bookmark. Also, you can see timing between bookmarks in the bookmark menu by holding control and clicking on the two bookmarks of interest. Lastly, I like to use histogram view to first uh, navigate to an interesting area and then use bookmarks to mark them. X's, O's, and bookmarks to me are a very underrated feature of uh, analysis. It really allows you to look at timing between events and uh, for example, very recently I was at a customer account where we were doing, uh, we were using X's and O's to look at transitions from, let's say, from S and W's in SAS. Uh, and using the X's and O's really helped us to find out uh, that some windows were a little bit off of spec. So let's go ahead and take a look at a trace and go through creating X's, O's, and bookmarks. Let me just uh, get rid of this stuff here. All right. So for setting X's and O's, I'm going to use protocol view. And as I said, using histogram view is a nice way to go about things. Um, I have histogram view set to show me where the PM recs are and PM X and where COM wakes are for waking the device up out of uh, partial. So if I hold control, I can zoom in on the areas. Let's say that uh, I wanted to look at this area over here. Okay. So I see a PM Rex and a PM Mac. Let's say that I wanted to see the timing between the two events. I can set an X, set an O, and you'll see down here that the timing is 117 nanoseconds. What's also interesting about this particular section that I zoomed in on is you'll see that the calm wake occurred much longer after this partial so if I wanted to see how long that took I can go from looking at uh, the DC idle I'll set an X here to when the calm wake actually came out set an O and you'll see that it was a uh, hundred and twenty microseconds If I think this is actual an interesting area, I can right click and set a bookmark and say long time in PM partial. If I see other events that have similar timing, like let's say over here, I can click on that and say another long wake up period. I can go into bookmarks here and see all the different bookmarks that were set and um, use con you know use the control key click on another one and see what the delta time was between the two events what's also neat about setting bookmarks is that if I wanted to save a trace between two bookmarks I can do so by going to file save and then choosing start from to start end and then type in a file name and save. Searching, uh, searching through the trace can be done in a variety of ways. There's quick search, which is located at the top of trace view, advanced search, which is in the advanced search menu, statistics view by clicking on the blue linked values, and in histogram view by clicking on an event. When you use a search, any item matching the search term will be marked with an S, so you'll know which one actually matches. Use bookmarks with searching to have them marked for future use. And as a pro tip, 
If you find an interesting frame, you can right click on it and choose copy and paste it in the triggering menu under capture control. So let's take a look at how to use searching. So let's say here I want to look for a data frame. I can type in data, choose STP data, and then click on the arrow and it'll take me to the data frame in the trace. Note again that the S marks the area. That's one way to skin a cat. Now let's look at advanced searching. Here you can set up a sequence of events that will match what you have set. So let's say I wanted to look, first look for a data frame and I wanted to then look for a set device bits to occur after it. Okay. And then my action is to match. So if I click on next it'll take me to the areas in the trace which match the search term. Okay. Also you can use statistics view as sort of a search as you see here the items are marked in blue so I can see that there's a right, right sectors command here when I click on the right sectors command it'll take me to it in the trace I can scroll through max transfer sizes, max throughput, these are all my matching search terms. Okay. And then I can just add bookmarks as I like. Okay. Also, as I said before, if there is a particular frame that you're interested in, and you want to use it as a trigger, so let's say this right sector is extended, I can right click, copy, and go into my triggering, and paste. And you'll see all the values are in here, and uh, just press run and trigger on that event. Uh, to me this is actually a really useful feature, as uh, generally if there are uh, frames that have interesting values, you'll have to write them down on a piece of paper, go back into triggering, create an event, and then specify the values. This just cuts all of that work out of the middle. Okay, the next section is hiding showing. Hiding and showing allow you to quickly hide or show wanted and unwanted traffic. There are two ways to hide using the quick hide bar which is just below the quick search and using the advanced hide show. Hiding can be useful if you want to hide all of the primitives and see only frames or vice versa. Showing is better suited for displaying specified frames or primitives excluding everything else. So let's take a look at that. So first we'll use the hiding up here. So the first thing we're going to do is do SATA handshaking, which is generally your uh, SATA X ready, SATA R ready, uh, RIPs, WTRMs. If I click on this, you'll see that all that handshaking disappears. And what is left is essentially all of my frames. And uh, if I have any power management in here, you'll see the power management as well. Let's just see if power management is present. So that's one way to skin a cat. Let's say that you actually wanted to use the advanced hide show and you notice that there are two radio buttons here for show events and hide events. Uh, what they do is quite different. Let's use hide events first. So let's say that I don't care to see um, data frames. So I'll click and I'll drag data frames over here and I don't care to see um, x readies. I can click apply. And now all my data frames and x readies are gone from the trace. Okay. If you want to undo it, just close the events and click apply again. Showing events, as I mentioned before, is a great way to really narrow down the type of data you want to see and hide everything else. So, for instance, let's say that I'm only interested in seeing my command frames, 
which is a register hosted device, and set device bits. Okay. If I click apply, all I'll see over here again are my command frames and set device bits. Okay. Nothing else. So let me go ahead and kill both of these events and apply. So that's advanced hiding and showing. Next is using frame details. Frame details is one of the views in the software that will show you how the frame looks with respect to the protocol specification. This really gives users a chance to match learning with actual data. So let's say that you're new to serial ATA or serial attached SCSI and you're looking at frames uh, inside of a specification. When you look at the software, you'll see what, you know, what you're reading about. And I'll show you that in a second. One of the neat thing about the frame details view is it lets you really easily view values and check to see if they're set correctly. As a pro tip, you can copy as HTML and paste to an email if you want to send someone an incorrect or correct frame. So let's take a look at that. So here are the frame details view here. If I click on a frame, you'll see that the frame is decoded completely. And this will look very close to a spec. Just for an example, let's look at a spec here. eventually. <laughs> so you'll see that there are bits, command codes, etc. and it'll look just like what you see in a spec. As I said before, if you wanted to copy is HTML and then make an email and paste it in, you can do so. What's really nice about this feature is that it cuts out again more unnecessary work. So let's say that you see a frame that has some values set incorrectly and you wanted to send it to a colleague. You can then uh, just copy and paste on an email instead of writing it down on a piece of paper and sending it off. Lastly, uh, there is exporting views. Almost all of the views can be exported to CSV, XML, and HTML. Some views are very specific to a format type. So for instance, the frame details can only be exported to XML and HML. Exporting also allows easy parsing of the data for reports, etc. So let's say that I wanted to do an export of the spreadsheet view or of the transaction view. I would go to File, Export, and choose which view I want to export. So let's say Spreadsheet what format I want to export it in and if I wanted to do it between bookmarks I could do so here and then I'll go into options. In options you'll see all the different things that you can use if you're using hiding uh, like if you were hiding all of the set of handshaking primitives uh, it would not be displayed in the export. There's also this neat feature over here that says include payload data. This is actually a very useful feature if you are doing read write verifies as you can include up to however many bytes you want of every single data payload that we have in the trace. And then you can use a program like Excel to go through and just do data matching and whatever doesn't match will be highlighted. Okay. Lastly, we encourage you to explore. There are lots of other features in the software and different ways of using it. Make sure to reach out to support here at Serial Tech if you have any issues, questions on usage, or suggestions for improvement. Our product is probably 99% customer defined. We listen very carefully to uh, whatever suggestions our users have, and uh, if we find that the, use, the feature that you're requesting is going to be useful for lots of people, we try to implement it as best as we can. You can reach us at support at serialtech.com or visit us on the web at serialtech.com slash support.asp. Lastly, we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for your time and efforts and being our valued customer. We hope using our products accelerates your debug and development cycles. 
I personally hope that these videos were insightful, and uh, if you have any suggestions for, su for future videos, please be sure to contact me at matt at serialtech.com.